Noise in the ICU. Given the general commotion of the modern world, the rest of us might be tempted to rationalize noise, to dismiss it as something we can simply get used to, but the research suggests that this is a risky approach. We process noise subconsciously as a danger signal that triggers a fight or flight response in our sympathetic nervous system. So even if we manage to tune it out or sleep through it, noise works subtly, raising our blood pressure and heart rate and causing hormonal changes and potentially far-reaching consequences, including anxiety, stress, nervousness, nausea, headaches, sexual impotence, mood swings, and neurosis. Environmental noise has also been linked to tinnitus, a chronic ringing in the ears that can lead to insomnia, irritability, and depression. Noise has even been associated with a small increase in cardiovascular disease. Totaling these effects, the World Health Organization estimates that in Western Europe, at least a million healthy life years are lost annually due to traffic-related noise alone. If noise has this much impact on us in our everyday lives, imagine how much of an impact it has on those who are critically ill in the ICU. Noise, friend or foe? This research project focuses on the negative effects of noise on patient recovery in the ICU. According to a consult in KMOXI, Noise is defined as any sound that causes subjective annoyance and irritation, and it is an obnoxious stimulus for people. Noise also has been defined as being any sound that is unwanted, undesirable, or without musical quality. Noise level is quantified by using the unit of decibel. For the purpose of this study, recovery is defined in terms of wound healing, sleep, blood pressure, pain level, heart rate, and respiratory rate. ICU noise has been shown to be a factor in reduced patient recovery with noise levels in the ICU ranging from 50 to 75 decibels, with the highest peak level reaching 103 decibels. The World Health Organization recommended that noise levels inside hospital wards should not exceed 40 decibels at night in terms of sleep disturbance. Unfortunately, recent data has shown that noise levels inside hospitals are much higher than the guideline values. Noise is an ongoing problem that can be reduced by following certain guidelines and implementing interventions. The purpose of this research is to find the sources of noise in the ICU, how this noise affects patient recovery, and what we can do as health professionals to reduce this noise. This research aims to answer two different questions. The first question, do different types of noise affect patient recovery in the ICU? And the second question, does increased noise in the ICU decrease patient recovery rate? The results. All the articles analyzed included noise measure measurements in the ICU and agreed that high level levels of noise negatively impact patient recovery. Various levels of noise were obtained in each study because of different factors and the different methods of measurement that were used in each study. Despite varied results, all of the studies revealed increased noise levels above the World Health Organization's recommended 40 decibel level. According to Stokowski and Ryan, hearing loss is associated with sounds at 85 decibels and higher. A consul and Kimoxi used the Brule and Kager 2144 model frequency analyzer by each patient's bed to measure noise in the ICU. The average noise level was 65 decibels and fluctuated throughout the day with the highest level reaching 89 decibels. More specifically, the results distinguished between noise levels of different sources. Telephone ring, 68 decibels. Monitor alarms, 68 decibels infusion pump alarms 61 decibels, noise from vacuum cleaner 74 decibels, footsteps 89 decibels, and conversations among ICU staff 74 decibels. G, Kang, and Mills reported staff conversation and alarms to be regarded as the most disturbing noises for patients. 
Several studies discussed effects of noise on specific qualities of recovery. Results indicated that wound healing was prolonged due to negative effects of noise. Quality sleep was negatively affected when noise levels were higher than 40 decibels. However, over time, studies showed that patients adapted to noise in the environment and sleep disturbance was not greatly affected. High noise levels also have been shown to increase blood pressure, respiratory rate, and heart rate in patients. Lastly, research shows that patients in the ICU reported increased pain levels and discomfort with increased noise levels. Evidence is provided that a variety of sources cause noise in the ICU, resulting in decreased patient recovery rates. Literature supports various techniques that can be used to reduce intensive care unit noise. First of all, you can provide staff education about noise, including the negative impact sound can have on patients and why decreased sound levels are important for recovery. Second, you can set noise guidelines, such as putting pagers on vibrate, lowering volumes on telephones, monitors, and equipment, using individual pager systems instead of overhead pagers, using headphones for patient televisions, and oiling squeaky doors and carts. You can measure noise levels regularly using the Brule and Kager 2144 model frequency analyzer or the Norsonic 116 sound level meter. You can use double glazed windows, floors, walls, and ceilings made from material that absorbs sound more effectively. Or you can enclose the nurse's station in clear glass and have single occupancy rooms for each patient, decreasing noise disturbances between patients and nurses and amongst patients. Lastly, health professionals should wear soft soled shoes. The results of this research positively support both research questions, and literature showed that a variety of sources caused noise in the intensive care unit, decreasing patient recovery rates. Several of the sources mentioned physiological effects that noise caused in patients, such as decreased sleep quality, safety, wound healing, and increased heart rate, blood pressure, pain, and anxiety. These noises were shown to be caused by a variety of sources, including other patients, staff conversations, alarms, pagers, vacuums, and televisions. Literature provided suggestions on how to correct this problem and decrease the noise in the ICU while increasing patient recovery rate. It is important for staff to be educated about this noise issue, as well as having strict noise level guidelines, measuring noise levels on a regular basis, and decreasing sound levels of alarms, monitors, and pagers. Noise in the ICU should be seriously considered so that all healthcare professionals can work together towards the mutual goal of improving patients' health and increasing their recovery rate during their hospital stay.